What is up, you guys? Welcome back to Title Gardens. This video is going to be a little bit of an update on one of our species specific tanks. A good while back, one of my friends, Nathan, was getting his new show tank delivered from Ocean Life Aquariums down in Florida. These guys are the ones that also do the aquariums for Top Shelf. So he suggested, you know, if you need any tanks, since there's already going to be a delivery made, uh, you can piggyback on my delivery. And I'm like, well, that sounds like a pretty good idea. So I got two aquariums made by Derek at Ocean Life Aquariums. And that's what these guys here are. It took me a good long forever to actually get them set up and stocked, but here we are. The idea was one of them was going to be a euphilia dominated tank and the other one I wasn't entirely certain of. So it's kind of a little bit of a hodgepodge between some bubble tip anemones and Ganiopora, but that's neither here nor there. Focusing back on this one, however, it is a euphilia based tank. And I use Euphilia rather loosely because, as of right now anyway, uh, Euphilia pretty much only describes torches. Hammers and frog spawn are now classified as Fimbriophilia, so I guess technically this is no longer a Euphilia only tank. This tank is in the ballpark of 200 gallons. It measures 60 inches long, 36 inches front to back, and a little over 24 inches tall. I think it's about 26 maybe. So yeah, give or take 200 something gallons. It's made out of three quarter inch Starfire and has an external overflow box. It's tied in with our farming system. So in that sense, it shares all the equipment with that. So all the controllers, the protein skimmer, calcium reactor, everything. It's really designed for the entire system, so it's just really adding volume on top of that. And there's some good and bad to that. The good is that, well, it's already tied in with all the technology and all the testing and everything like that. There's no independent husbandry that's really needed so much. I guess the downside would be we've noticed that certain tanks do better when they are isolated. Like some of our quarantine systems, for example, the LPS in the quarantine systems tend to do better than in our grow out tanks. Kind of strange, but it might just be the concentration of attention, the concentration of the food that we're doing, the percentage size of the water changes that we're doing. All of these things play a part in perhaps just a better environment on the smaller scale. Kind of unexpected, to be perfectly honest. I was expecting that a larger system that's, you know, 2,500 gallons would be so much more stable, so much more robust. And it kind of hasn't worked out that way. But at the same time, these corals are doing super well. I think as far as just this euphilia tank is concerned, I couldn't be happier with how things have just flourished in here. Let's talk a little bit about this aquascape. This rock structure was made from Marco rock and that technique that we were doing pretty much with all of our custom rock work where we use thin super glue from glue masters and a sandy substrate. We're using primarily carob sea and I wish I could give you the exact grain size of the carob sea that we're using but long story short find the finest that you can the finest most powdery sand you can and by spraying some of the liquid glue and then sand, glue, sand, glue, sand, glue, sand, you make a very natural looking bond that is super, super strong. Essentially, what's gonna break is the rock before that bond breaks. Anytime that we're lifting any of these big rock structures that we make, if it's gonna fall apart, the failure point is the Marco rock. It's almost never, ever that glue-sand mixture. Anyway, with this rock structure, we were looking to get something a little bit chunkier than what we have going on in our SPS tank. In the SPS tank, we effectively wanted to create almost like a skeleton structure to allow for maximum water movement through the structure as those colonies grow in. Here, we could go with a little bit more of a chunkier look because even though these things do fill up space, they don't fill up space 
with their own skeleton as much as something with a growth form like Aquaphora. So you can see here that there are some decent sized heads of hammers, torches, and frog spawn growing in. And our goal with this tank really is just to let these things go. You might be wondering as they grow, would there be kind of aggression issues? And there might be. Right as of this moment, there hasn't been a need to move anything just yet, but I do expect some conflict between these torch colonies and nearby hammers. The torch colonies close to one another don't seem to bother each other. We've got some of the more exotic named ones like the Dragon Soul, New York Knicks, and whatnot. And to be perfectly honest, I don't really know which ones are which because they're very, very slightly different in coloration from one another, but we've got also different types of the frog spawn, and we're always also on the lookout for more different varieties as they come. There's still some room on the rocks that we can find some home for them, but the idea long term is just to grow big colonies. I don't really plan to get back in here and propagate anything unless I really have to, because we have an entire grow out stock of these types of corals in our system already. This is really more for the show. As far as fish stocking in here, nothing really too crazy. We didn't thoroughly think it through to be perfectly honest. We just have, uh, I think it's a twin spot mimic tang. We've got a little fox face who's pretty antisocial and a few yellow tailed damsels. We might add in a little bit more later, uh, but I'm not exactly sure. My biggest concern came down to how aggressive that tang was. I really wanted to put a copper band in here because early on, we did have an Aptasia outbreak in this tank, which was so very, very bizarre because literally we saw one one day and I was like, well, that's kind of strange because we really haven't added much of anything in here. And then the next day, I think there was like a hundred. And so I wanted to put a copper band in here because that pretty much would eliminate that issue. But the Tang in here was kind of eliminating that option. He was just too much of a jerk. So what we did instead was we put in just a few of the Aptasia eating nudibranx, and they absolutely annihilated everything in here. They annihilated all the Aptasia in here. That worked out really, really, really well. And once they kind of ran out of Aptasia, we moved them to other systems and things like that. But that is kind of what tends to happen with the nudibranchs. They, they breed so quickly that they consume all the Aptasia and essentially it's done. It's very difficult to even find a single Aptasia or a nudibranch in this tank. As far as fish goes, I'll put it up to the audience. What kind of fish do you think works well with Euphilia? Part of me is thinking maybe clownfish, even though I really don't like clownfish, but there's a lot of, I guess, hosting interactions that might be interesting. I don't want clownfish to kill an expensive torch, so that's my, my biggest worry with big clownfish. But yeah, if you guys have some ideas on that, yeah, throw it in the comments below. As far as the equipment on this tank, right now we're lighting it with three Orphic lights. My friend Nathan, he is a big proponent of these lights. I think he's got like six of them over his tank and they really do cast a nice, even, very photogenic blanket of light in the tank. We mainly use Ecotech Radions pretty much throughout all of our facilities here. But if you decide to go with the Orphic, it's absolutely an excellent light. This is our first time really messing with them long term. The control right now, we have the Orphic Atlantic V4s. It's a little bit non-intuitive, but from what I understand, there's a newer light with a newer control system that is a lot more user-friendly. But as far as their light output and the aesthetic of their color, it's very promising. So I'm glad that I decided to dabble with these guys. This is a little bit silly. We have an AI Nero. Five, I believe, an AI Nero 5. Uh, for some odd reason, we could not find the outside magnet to this thing. Could not find it. So I'm ordering a replacement magnet set. I really like these AI Neros. I'm less a fan of uh, the Ecotech MP series pumps. I am just the unluckiest person when it comes to those, but I always seem to have some issue with them. So AI owned by the same company. They make these Neros. They have worked really, really nicely, except for the time that I somehow lost the, the rear magnet. So you see it kind of just doing its little dance here. 
Ideally, we could probably use one or two more of these just to provide just a little bit more flow through the rocks in the back perhaps, but right now it's putting in a, like a gentle motion into the tank. The only other source of flow are the returns, which are tied in with the rest of the system. There is a single Abyss A400 that powers the other five aquariums, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. There's a single return pump managing a 2,500 gallon system. The overflow design is one of these bean animal triple overflows. The main drain is the one you see there with the gate valve. And then we have the middle drain, which sets the height of the water in the overflow box. And then the one on the far left is the full emergency. These are inch and a half drains and can pretty much handle all the flow individually. I really like the triple overflow drain designs. It's a good peace of mind just in case something were to block these things. You can make them dead quiet. And yeah, all together it's not that difficult to put together. One other aspect that I like about this overflow box is that it has a lid that really cuts down on the noise. Even if the drain system wasn't dialed in to be dead silent, it cuts down on just that little bit of splatter that you get through the weir, things like that. So I'm a big fan. As far as what this system shares with the entire grow out set, we have our chemistry system here. We have a 12 inch geo with the additional chamber. And the additional chamber helps a lot more than I was expecting. It essentially just takes the effluent line from the main reactor and sends it through a secondary rinse stage. So it soaks up that remnant CO2 and provides just that little bit more of the calcium and alkalinity. The media that we're currently using is the ARM, aragonite reactor media. And one thing that we noticed is that it is quite a bit high in magnesium. Very unexpected because we were getting very high magnesium readings without needing to dose anything. We were like, where are we getting magnesium from? And then I look at a, a picture of the packaging for ARM and it says, high magnesium formula. <laughs> the reason why we didn't pick up on that sooner is because we buy ARM in the bulk packaging, which doesn't have any of that language on it. It's just, you know, these big 60 pound bags of rubble that you see. So it's like kind of like, ah, calcium reactor media typically doesn't have magnesium built in like that. But yeah, that came as a little bit of a surprise. We also manually dose some calcium and alkalinity that you see there. And by manually, I mean it is on a dosing system, but we do have to provide a little bit extra if it's falling behind. That's something that we test all the time for because we have a lot, and I mean a lot, of stony coral growth going on in this system. So it's kind of this moving target. Ideally, the calcium reactor would maintain it all by itself, but that's just not realistic. This is a very, very large system. Okay guys, that pretty much does it for this euphilia slash fimbriophilia based system. I'm still on the lookout for some different varieties that we don't have, and hopefully we can start filling in a lot of these empty spots with some really cool colonies. Anyway, if you guys have any further questions about this tank, by all means, toss those questions in the comment box below, and I will see you all next time. Happy reefing.